special kind of freedom. Henry Gross with you today, and um, thank you for listening to this devotional. In the United States, the average screen time on a cell phone is 5.4 hours in a day. That's about 33% of your waking hours in a day. The notion is that cell phones are said to give us more freedom. Freedom to take pictures of our friends, free to communicate with that endless text message stream. If our phones fall, we panic. If our friends fall, we laugh. You know you're texting way too much. When lying on a beach, you get up, you realize that you have a bad sunburn, except for the areas across your chest where you've been holding your cell phone. You know you've been receiving way too many silent vibrating phone calls when the right side of your behind begins to get smaller. Are cell phones freeing as we seem to think or are we just fooling ourselves? I use the cell phone as an example to point out how easily we become attached to stuff, material stuff and emotional stuff. So what is freedom? Merriam-Webster defines freedom as the state of not having or being affected by something unpleasant, painful, or unwanted. Most definitions of freedom have an inference of lacking something. And yet, all too often, we think we have freedom if we have obtained certain things, cars, homes, great job, money, prestige, etc. These things are nice, but do they really give us freedom? Remember the definition of freedom is the lack of something. What does Jesus tell us about freedom? Now someone approached him and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be good, sell all you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man had heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus says, sell or give up what you have and follow me. The young man had difficulty giving up what he was hanging on to. We can take this one step further and look at the emotional baggage we all carry. Our hurts, our envies, our wants, our desires, our loves, our hates, all of the thoughts we carry in our minds and our hearts that simply consume us. Remember the definition of freedom. This baggage is definitely not something that is lacking. Our first teachers in life are our parents. Our parents, my parents were no exception, especially my mom with regards to this understanding of freedom. She was the product of a very difficult time during and after World War II, leaving her country of birth, separating from her husband, and as a single mom raising three daughters who were mentally challenged. She always seemed to have a great outlook on life. One would never hear a word of complaining. Now later in life, she is battling dementia, and we have had to enlist the aid of a nursing home. My wife and I had to clean up the family home, and in going through my mother's personal effects, we discovered, amongst her many talents, she was a gifted writer. Something we didn't know, 
because she kept these writings to herself. We came across this particular writing of hers, which spells out clearly what Jesus was asking of the rich man and what he is asking of us. A special kind of freedom. I am asking myself, am I a Christian? If I am, then I am free. I am free of the sins I have committed yesterday, free of fear and what tomorrow will bring. I am exempted from the meaninglessness and emptiness of this earthly existence. False gods I do not know. I recognize my loving God in all creation. In Him I am free. If I am a Christian, then I am bound, body and soul, to the one who rendered his life to make me free. My Savior, Jesus Christ, shed his blood to wash away my sins, to bring me from darkness into light. He adds meaning and justification to my having been created, no matter how insignificant I may seem. Again, I am asking myself, am I a Christian? How am I using this freedom which was given to me so generously? Am I allowing it to unfold and to create in me an overflowing joy? Am I applying my freedom to show a genuine love and concern for my neighbor to the honor and glory of my God? Or am I simply gambling this this precious precious gift gift away? away? I must conclude that freedom is not attainable without definite commitment to the cause of our loving Creator. Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go and sell all you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. It is difficult to give up all that we cling to. I agree. The clinging part is what Jesus is is talking about. He gives us everything, but asks us to enjoy these gifts, but not cling to them. When we focus and get consumed by all this earthly stuff, we lose focus on the true gift, Jesus himself. Remember, when you were learning a sport or a musical instrument, at first you would struggle and get frustrated, but over time you got good at it. Remember the definition of freedom is lack of something. As we accomplished the sport or the musical instrument, we gave up our struggle and frustration. Isn't that the same with what Jesus is asking us to do? Give up focus on earthly things and conclude that freedom is not attainable without definite commitment to the cause of our loving Creator. This may all sound like a fairy tale, but I'm almost guaranteed that you have experienced that moment of freedom. Think when you had an extremely rough day and you take that deep breath and surrender all of the bad thoughts of the day. Didn't that feel liberating? What you may not have thought about was, who did you surrender it to? Nevertheless, you experienced freedom. Now think about a bad relationship that keeps festering in your mind. Have you surrendered those thoughts? Just like the sport or the musical instrument, it took a conscious decision to practice and get proficient, surrendering to Jesus also takes a conscious decision. Finally, to reiterate from my mother's writings, I am applying my freedom to show a genuine love and concern for my neighbor, to the honor and glory of my God, or am I simply gambling this precious gift away? Remember the definition of freedom. Thanks, Mom.